Victor, uh, we'll see Valen tomorrow. And as she said, we continue with that focus on the function and the role of the South African Reserve Bank, which marks 100 years of existence tomorrow. So today we take a look at uh, its role in overseeing the country's financial sector. And we'll also look at how the global COVID-19 pandemic has affected the economy and the workings of the central bank. And uh, economist and Reserve Bank Deputy Governor uh, Fundi uh, Chazibana joins us now in conversation. Thank you so much for your time this morning and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Sakina. Thank you for having me. So yesterday we got an understanding of the functioning of the Reserve Bank. Uh, but uh, today we want to take a look at the role uh, that the central bank plays in regulating the financial sector. Let's start there. Okay, so the Reserve Bank has got uh, probably three roles that I would say in terms of the financial sector. The first relates to the development of the financial sector, and this is a function that we have uh, together with the National Treasury. So this is ensuring that we have got uh, uh, various players that allow each one of us to uh, either invest our funds, to transfer our funds, uh, and also not just for households, but for corporates as well. Uh, so the JSE, uh, the running of the JSE, uh, just also understanding how the bond market functions, that is something that the Reserve Bank has an oversight over. Then we have got the regulation and the supervision of financial institutions, and that is a function that the Prudential Authority undertakes uh, to ensure that these institutions are safe and sound. And then the third layer of, of our function is to ensure that the overall system uh, remains healthy in order for it to support the economy uh, holistically. So those are the broad areas uh, in the financial market uh, that, that the Reserve Bank uh, plays. Uh, but the one that is, I think that in terms of legislation, uh, when one looks at um, the Financial Regulation Act, uh, that is the legislation uh, currently that governs the, the Reserve Bank's oversight over, uh, over financial markets, and, and it includes all of those areas. Mm. Fundi, looking at that oversight role, in light of recent criticism around the lack of transformation in the sector, uh, would you say that this is a reflection of a failure on the part of the central bank? So I... I think, Sakina, you know, transformation, knowing our history, uh, is, is an area that is going to be evolving. Both the National Treasury and the Reserve Bank uh, place transformation uh, as a central element uh, within the financial sector. Uh, as you know, we do have a financial sector charter, but in addition to that, uh, one of the things that we look at in terms of the development of the financial sector is to look to diversify the types of, of players to ensure that there are uh, different products that are available in the market and that these products uh, cater for the needs of, of, consumer, of consumers. The other area that we have to ensure, of course, as the primary function is that the, you know, the, the, um, uh, is that the, the owners of, of, of financial institutions and the managers of financial institutions uh, behave in a way that, um, that uh, ensures that your finances are safe and sound. Uh, and over and above that, of course, we ensure that uh, the sector is transformed. But it is not an area that we are totally in control of uh, because we need to get applicants, uh, people applying to, uh, to, to set up a financial institution. So if one looks at banking and compares uh, the banking sector and the insurance sector, uh, probably there's a lot more transformation that has happened in the insurance sector because in insurance, you can have smaller organizations that offer specialized uh, uh, functions and, and products to, to consumers. Uh, banking is slightly different 
uh, and in that we only have different or four types of, of banks that we could uh, potentially cater for. We have got licenses for commercial banks, licenses for mutual banks, uh, corporative banks, and more recently, corporative financial institutions. Uh, I think that the, the issue relates to whether individuals uh, pass the test uh, to become owners of, of financial institutions. Uh, and as a central bank, the criteria there uh, is set. Uh, and, and I think that I, I think that we, we are working with financial institutions on the whole to ensure that uh, we assist those who have an interest in setting up financial institutions uh, as, as speedily and, and as best as we can, uh, but also ensuring that uh, we are compliant with, uh, with the regulatory requirements that will keep the sector safe. Uh, for you and I. Mm. And, and whilst appreciating the role that you have to play in making sure that you safeguard uh, these institutions and the public by extension, um, one has to ask, when was the last time uh, these rules uh, were actually reviewed, given our history of financial and economic exclusion, um, especially of previously disadvantaged people in this country? Yes. So the Financial Sector Regulation Act, uh, Sakina, is fairly new. Uh, so the Prudential Authority itself and our Twin Peaks regulation that looks at the uh, prudential supervision of these institutions plus the, the conduct of, of these institutions uh, was uh, passed in, in 2018. So it's very recent uh, in terms of, of, of the, the, uh, the, the institutions that are responsible for this and the legislation itself. So it's fairly recent uh, that we have reviewed uh, the objectives that we have for the financial sector. Mm. Um, you also touched on the issue of, you know, the type of institutions uh, that can be set up. Uh, and uh, the issue of, uh, in the public domain recently is that of mutual banks, um, VBS <coughs> and uh, also the recently formed mutual bank by uh, Young Women's Business Network. Yes. And all yes. of the controversy, as you may well be aware of, Fundi, around that. Um, what are your thoughts on what has happened and uh, the sort of perception that it creates around uh, not just what happens to these banks, but also again, the oversight of the central bank in these institutions. So let me start with, with VBS, Sakina. So with VBS, I, I think this is an area uh, that uh, all of us uh, have had a concern about. Uh, as a central bank, uh, we had some measures in place. Perhaps I should just clarify uh, that there is a difference in supervision between a commercial bank and a mutual bank. Uh, so mutual banks, in order to allow for sufficient access, we as a central bank will not have the same stringent re requirements of a mutual bank as we would a large commercial bank that provides uh, loans and, and uh, has got uh, probably dealings with corporates as well, because we regulate according to the risk that is taken by the financial institution. And with regards to VBS, what, what has, of course, materialized over time is that we were in the process of, of working with VBS in, into changing their banking license because their activities changed over time. Uh, but the bigger issue with regards to VBS is the fraud that took place within the, the institution. So as a central bank, we do rely a lot on information that we receive from auditors. We set guidelines. And of course, as we realized that things were going wrong, uh, we did intensify supervision. Very difficult to pick up uh, issues of fraud when, when the books themselves are cooked. Uh, but we are in the process of 
revisiting uh, what it is that we can do differently, uh, what it is that we can uh, uh, do to, to detect uh, the possibility of, of fraud. But as I mentioned, this is difficult if you have the audit firms who are the other eyes of the regulators uh, also uh, potentially involved in, in some of the, the wrongdoing. Uh, so let me turn to you know, the, the most recent issue that has been in the, in the press about uh, the current license that we are looking at for, uh, for the mutual bank. Uh, and, and maybe here, I, I don't want to dwell too much because this application is, is still in process. Uh, but I do want to flag that when uh, institutions or individuals apply to the central bank uh, for license, they have got a different way in which they can set them up, themselves up. There are different ways in which institutions raise funding and cash. Some of them do it through the stock market, uh, and some, if you are a cooperative bank uh, or a mutual bank, would raise funds for your members. It is not up to us as the central bank, of course, to dictate how this is done. I, I think that what we, we, we endeavor to do is to ensure that when an institution is set up, it will have the required capital uh, that uh, we require as a central bank uh, for it to hold, so that when depositors place their funds in that institution, those deposits are not there for the day-to-day -day running of, of that institution. The deposits are, are there uh, in order uh, for, for, for households to, uh, to have an opportunity to, uh, to keep their funds uh, uh, safe, plus earn an interest because you are placing your cash with an institution for, uh, for, uh, for caretaking, and they can on-lend your funds to someone else. But at the time that you are requesting your funds, you should be able to to get those back. But as we are interacting with the institutions, we endeavor to make sure that at all times uh, they they behave in, in a way that uh, that that is is prudent. We'll leave it there for today. Thanks so much for your time this morning, uh, Fundi uh, Jazibana, who is economist and Reserve Bank Deputy Governor.